at Tabernacle Congregational Church, an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. And as I've been doing just about every Sunday during this summer, uh, when we've been in person as well as online, to uh, reassure those of you who are here in the sanctuary, and especially if you're a visitor, saying, where is everyone? Um, we typically have more people on Zoom than we do in person, even though, uh, although this morning is a little cooler. And uh, when I last checked uh, online, I would say we're almost even this morning. But then again, everybody comes in the next five to 10 minutes usually, so <laughs> we'll see how that plays out. If any of you in the sanctuary have announcements, please make your way to the microphone so that folks on Zoom can hear you. If any of you on Zoom have announcements, please unmute yourselves and go ahead. Go ahead, Betsy. Hello. Oh, sorry. Um, I do have two announcements. The first one is that we will be setting up parking. I'll be getting all the sign-up sheets ready for that this week, and we'll let you know. And we're going to start that last weekend of September. We're going to take advantage of that weekend as well. And talking of the last weekend in September, we have our annual visit from our friend Sean Daggett and his missions class out of Harding University in Arkansas. And they will be with us Saturday the 25th at about 3.30. If you would like to come and hear the talk that um, the historian gives to this class and get to see the historic room, you are welcome to join us. And um, yeah, Sean's, Sean's a great guy, and he's been coming with his class, mm, I would say, six or eight years now. It's a great, it's a great relationship. Thank you. Anyone else have announcements this morning? Anyone on Zoom have announcements? Well, seeing or hearing none, we will uh, prepare for worship as we listen to the prayer.
invite you to join Brenda and I in the call to worship. Those of you who are in the sanctuary to please go ahead and read along with Brenda. And those of you on Zoom, please also read along, but keep yourselves muted. When we, <coughs> excuse me, my allergies are still kicking in. When we are left to our own devices, we become like weak and cracked vessels, unable to sustain love, mercy, and justice. But when we come before God, seeking God's healing love, we are given the strength and courage to serve others. We often want to have our own way in all that we do. We have a difficult time trusting in God. Lord, come to us this day, healing our mistrust and our hesitancy. Give us spirits ready to receive your forgiveness and mercy. Our hymn of praise is Have Thine Own Way, Lord. Words are in your bulletin and hopefully on the screen for those of you on Zoom. God has brought us into abundance. God has given us physical and spiritual nourishment. God has led us to flowing waters of grace. We come to worship today seeking these things for our souls. May we accept what God offers us today in its entirety that we might share with others. Let us pray together saying, God of life, we confess that we have gone after worthless trinkets. 
often losing our own worth in our materialistic desires. Instead of claiming our true identity as children of God, we define ourselves by other titles. We are more than our jobs, our families, our stuff, our lack of stuff. We are more than our hair, our size, our skin, or even our age. While these things inform who we are, they are not what ultimately defines us. You define us. You are the God of life, the true living waters. Our own vessels can never quench the thirst we have for your living water. We try to drink from our own cisterns, cracked as they are. May we embrace what it means to partake of water that lives and moves, not limiting ourselves to lies of stagnancy like water in a jar. God of life, keep flowing around us that we may float in your living waters. Amen. God in community, holy in one, gather us into your heart, even as we pray as we are taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and deliver us from evil as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You have lifted us and dusted us off, O Lord. You have claimed us as your own. Let us celebrate your love for us in the lives of service to others, for you are all with us always. Amen. Praise God from Our Hebrew Bible reading today comes from Jeremiah 2, verses 4 through 13. Hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, What wrong did your ancestors find in me that they went far from me and went after worthless things and became worthless themselves? They did not say, Where is the Lord who brought us up from the land of Egypt, who led us in the wilderness in a land of deserts and pits, in a land of drought and deep darkness, in the land that no one passes through, where no one lives? I brought you into a plentiful land to eat its fruits and its good things. But when you entered, you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. The priest did not say, where is the Lord? Those who handle the law did not know me. Rulers transgressed against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal and went after things that do not profit. Therefore, once more I accuse you, says the Lord, and I accuse your children's children. 
Cross to the coasts of Cyprus and look. Send to Kedar and examine with care. See if there has ever been such a thing. Has a nation changed its gods even though they are no gods? But my people have changed their glory for something that does not profit. Be appalled, O heavens, at this. Be shocked, be utterly desolate, says the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and dug out cisterns for themselves, cracked cisterns that can hold no water. Our Christian Testament reading comes from Hebrews 13, verses 1 through 8 and 15 to 16. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them, those who are being tortured as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled, for God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money. Be content with what you have, for he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for each sacrifices are pleasing of, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. May God bless the reading and our understanding of this reading. Thank you. Now Matt. Thank you, Brenda. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our salvation. Amen. That last verse of the Jeremiah passage. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and dug out cisterns for themselves, cracked cisterns that can hold no water. You ever had a favorite cup or mug or favorite vase? And you pick it up one day and you go to drink from the cup or you're looking at the beautiful flowers in the vase and you go, where did that water come from? And you realize that that favorite mug or that favorite vase now has a crack in it. It has a leak and it doesn't hold water anymore. Jeremiah's point, as he's relating what God told him to share with the Israelites in Judah, was that folks have turned away from God. And by turning away, they were like cracked vases or mugs. And the grace of God, 
was leaking out of them because they no longer believed and followed the God of the living waters. Interesting image. You all hear me say almost every Sunday something from Bible study. And as we studied Jeremiah this past week, Folks were like, oh, this is not a pretty passage. God seems angry. God seems punishing. So when we got done with the New Testament passage, they said, so what are you, which one are you going to preach on, Joe? And I think they were surprised when I said, Jeremiah. Because in the end, Jeremiah is saying, God is on our side until we are not. Does that make sense? God is on our side, but sometimes we wander away. Sometimes we're the ones that are off track. That's what sin is means. Sin literally meant turning around, turning away from God. All the shouting in the Jeremiah text is because folks don't know they're off track. This isn't anger or wrath. It's God calling God's people back. They've wandered off. Worse, they think that everything they have is due to their own efforts rather than a gift from God. They have forgotten to be grateful. All their gratitude has leaked out. That's the image Jeremiah offers. We leak. We can't hold the grace of God, the living water of life. We receive it. We fill back up week by week, those of us who come to church. That's why we come on Sunday mornings. But during the week, it seems to leak out. And if we don't return to be filled again, we're going to go dry. We certainly understand that this year, don't we? We're going to be running on empty. We need to return to the source. No one, Jeremiah reminds us in this text, thought to ask about the author of all the goodness the people enjoy. No one thought to wonder where God is in the business of their lives. So we've gathered this Sunday to worship and do that very thing, to fill up on God's presence and to ask where God is in the rest of our lives and to be reminded that God has always been present. We're the ones who've wandered off. We're the ones who said, I can handle it. I can do it on my own. So now we're back to ask again for God to be present, for God to make God's self known to us. And we need to do it again and again because we leak. We are the cracked cisterns, in Jeremiah's words, letting the presence of God leak away day by day until we turn, return to be reminded. Part of what worship could offer each week are ways to practice the presence of God in the in-between time. 
think about what can we do throughout the week to be reminded that God is with us? How could we pray? How could we read? What might we do with and for one another to keep us on track and close to God? This is an opportunity for spiritual discipline. Maybe we need reminders in between Sunday worship when we come to get filled back up. Now, one of our deacons in particular sends cards to lots of folks in the congregation. She listens intently during the prayer time, and as much as she can hear and find addresses, sends cards to those who need prayer. When I first came to this church, Betty Lutz used to send cards to folks all the time. I can't tell you the number of times people would come up to me and say, I got this nice card from Betty. People who visited the first time would say, I got this card from this woman in your church. Would you introduce me to her? The church I attended in Phoenix when I lived there had cards in the pew pocket that said, thinking of you. And every Sunday, the pastor invited us to take out that card and to write a note to someone else in the congregation. Sometimes he'd invite us to look around and see who wasn't there and write a note and say, thinking of you, miss seeing you. Or again, hearing in prayer time. Or just sending a note to someone. And what that meant. I remember when my father died. I was so struck by the number of thinking of you cards I received from that congregation. People were asked to just fill them out and put them in the offering plates. And they went to the church office, and the church office addressed them and sent them out. Maybe knowing that other members of the family of God are doing those kinds of things bring a deeper level and experience to the act of praying? Maybe you could consider some daily email during the week to some member who has access to email or a text or make a phone call. Some way of reminding each other that God is ready to patch up our leaks so that we might retain more of the grace that we cracked cisterns might need. Back in the 70s, early 80s, and I was working with lots of different youth groups. We loved hearing Avery and Marsh and had him come to several of our youth conferences. And they sang this song written by Fred Kahn in 1974. Help us accept each other as Christ accepted us. Teach us as sister, brother, each person to embrace. Be present, Lord, among us, and bring us to believe we are ourselves accepted and meant to love and live. Teach us, O Lord, 
your lessons as in our daily life we struggle to be human and search for hope and faith. Teach us to care for people. Teach us to fail for all, not just for some. To love them as we find them or as they may become. Let your acceptance change us so that we may be moved in living situations to do the truth in love, to practice your acceptance until we know by heart the table for forgiveness and laughter's healing art. Lord, for today's encounters with all who are in need, who hunger for acceptance, for righteousness and bread, we need new eyes for seeing, new hands for holding on. Renew us with your spirit. Lord, free us and make us one. I invite you to think about all these things as we sing our hymn of response. Yezu, Yezu, fill us with your love. The New Century Hymnal number 498 and on the screen for those of you on Zoom.
And now we come to share with one another and our neighbors what our needs, our concerns, and our joys are this day. What are your prayers? Seth. All right, let us unite our hearts. For some of us here today, Lord, we wish the summer would never end. We've enjoyed opportunities to travel, to relax, to break away from schedules and hectic calendars. For others, there is the thrill of entering the new season, looking forward to the challenges ahead. On this Sunday, we gather to receive your blessings and to be filled once again with your grace, that we may recognize your presence in our lives and use the gifts that you have given to us in service to others. As we have offered names and situations to you in prayer for the compassionate healing love, we add our own names as well. Heal our wounds, we pray. Enable us to be strong in our commitment to you by serving others in need. Keep us open always to your abiding love. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn of sending forth is Jesus, Lover of My Soul, New Century Hymnal number 546 and on the Zoom screen. Thank mm -hmm. you.
to place your offering in the collection plates by the exit when you leave or to mail them into the church office or use the donate button on our website. Beloved of the Lord, go in peace, knowing that God's peace will be with you always. Go in service in God's world, helping those in need, sharing the gifts you have been given. Go in love, bring hope to all. Amen. 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 Amen.